Well, hello. We're back once again with Dewey. He gave me a phone call and he said he had a great experience with his Red Wigglers. So we're going to take time out to get educated once again. So enjoy the video. Hey, AJ. Hey, YouTubers. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming out, AJ. Uh, Dewey's very excited because AJ came on uh, the approximately four months ago, the third month, the 22nd, we, he helped me out and set up a bin. Thank you again, AJ, for the worms. But we added about a pound of worms to this bed, and I am totally excited because they're supposed to double in population every 90 days. Uh, I've been in it for four months now, so it's a little better than 90 days, but I'm pretty sure that they quadrupled. They didn't just double. I mean, they, it's amazing. You'll see when we look in the bin, but essentially I just followed some of the notes that I got from AJ as far as what they need, what they don't need. We discovered that I probably lost my previous herds due to dry environment where I was not taking care of them and the system that I have dries out easier than if you're doing your worms in a tote. So here I have to add water quite regularly. It's like watering a garden. If you don't water your garden, it won't grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yep. um, without further ado, I did make a few notes in here about going out. I keep a notebook ledger of things going on just so I can educate myself and go back and see what I did and whatnot. Um, we did not add, after we set up the bin, if you remember when I and AJ set up the bin, we fed them pretty good at the time. And it wasn't until the 30th on the third month that I was checking it out, everything looked good, and I added the chicken compost, or the chicken scraps. The kitchen, not chicken, <laughs> crackhead. Get your act together here. I can't read my own writing. I write like a doctor. Hey, you have your glasses on your neck, dude. Oh, there, <laughs> there you go. Gee, that might help out. <laughs> Good God. Getting old, I need my glasses to read anymore. Of course, good, better handwriting wouldn't hurt anything. So that was on the um, third month, the 30th. It was up until on the sixth month, I added the cleanings from underneath my lawnmower deck. Because I'm thinking, boy, that's pretty munched up. They should love that. I didn't see a whole lot of activity in that until uh, June 27th. That's when I found some of the worms were enjoying the deck cleanings. And they were absolutely loving the spent chicken litter. I've added, I'm using chicken litter to cover this, which we'll do today. We'll feed this and I'll show you that chicken litter. And they're just loving that stuff. You'll see when we open up the bin here, pull the cardboard back, the worms are just going ballistic with that stuff. I don't know what, I think that's part of the reasons why I've got a lot of it. Now, I and AJ were talking earlier too that you may not want to use this if you're having them in your house. But AJ will witness for me so you don't have to listen to me, but listen to AJ. You don't smell chicken litter in here at all, but they absolutely love it. When I peel that cardboard back, there's a number of times where I see worms laying on top of that chicken bedding, mating and having a good time. Of course, I interrupted them, but <laughs> <laughs> they were having a good time. <laughs> and I think that's the reason why I've got a lot of worms going in here, just simply because of that bedding. So without further ado, let's take a look inside the bin and see what we got. We've gone over this bin earlier in some of his previous videos. This is a pass-through bin that goes for, there's not going to be as many over here, but you can see over here they're already, they're crawling up into the cardboard here and whatnot. But get a gander at this because as soon as they see the light, they're going to disappear. As you can see, all the movement of them splitting around. I don't know if you can get that, AJ. Yep. And they're just, they're he's shining the light on them, so they're going crazy, but they just love laying on top of that bedding and underneath the wet cardboard which is what I found out works very well is the cardboard laying on top. It retains a lot of my moisture. And I, like I said, I, I replenish the cat's water every couple of days. So whatever the cat don't drink, I dump in here and whatnot. But this side here seems to be the most active side. Look at all them babies. God, they're awesome. The only down, I guess it's not a downfall because if I want to go fishing, I can come in here and I've got some, Somewhere in here we'll find the uh, big crawlers. Here's one right down there. Get him. Where's he at? Come here, you bugger. 
I just seen them, but they're quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Where'd he go? I know he's in there. But as you can see, there's a lot of movement going on in there. There's a, I mean, for us starting out with a pound of worms four months ago, I am thoroughly impressed with what's going on. Yeah, and I'm getting these guys here from when I had the chicken litter because mm -hmm. when we go out here, I can scoop it up and we'll show you the holes underneath the chicken litter. Yeah, so scared. I'm get, I'm getting these guys here from outside. So it's kind of a nice thing because if I want to go fishing and whatnot, I can come in here and I can dig my own worms and it's a lot easier. So you just, like you said, if you have those thick earthworms from outside, you throw them in here as well? Uh, I'm sure I get them in here because they're enjoying the, just like out there, they're loving that chicken litter outside because I've got it outside free to the worms. So I'm sure that's how I'm getting. They're probably laying eggs in there mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I'm getting them in here, which mm -hmm. I'm not worried about. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. They're, they're composting too. Here's a beautiful red wiggler. Good and I was, look how pretty I was, he is. And I was told, told too that... Uh, they can't breed with their other species of worms, so... Okay, so, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, crossbreeding. So. so here, if you look back here, you can see a hole back there. Mm -hmm. So the grates that I have in here, I think I have them too far apart because this stuff is breaking. When they break this down, it ends up falling through, and I do get worms and eggs down below. We'll, uh, we'll agitate this a little bit, and then we'll check out the compost down below. So while I have this open, let's see here. I've fed them... I fed them on this side last time. And you're right there, there's no smell. Absolutely, you smell any chicken litter in here no. whatsoever. You nope. can't tell it. So I did throw, oh my, we got an avocado seed here. Mm -hmm. she gonna, oh, look at there, she's starting to grow. Maybe I'll end up with an avocado. Yeah. <laughs> but as you can see, they just, they just gone crazy. So while we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and feed these guys. I fed them over here last time. I don't normally bury them in the, I'm trying to build this up because this is a through composter. So I'm trying to build this up. Hopefully I don't have my grates too far apart and this will sooner or later will settle. So I'm just going to give it time here before I go reinventing the wheel. So more or less, I'm just going to throw in my chicken scraps here or kitchen scraps. We got some paper towels in there. We got some onion peels, avocado peels. We like avocados. So I'm just going to lay that out in there and then we'll go out to the magic pile. But they, uh, it is amazing to me how much they like this stuff. Watch your step over here, AJ. We'll go out to the pile and get some chicken litter. As you can see here, they, you can see the worm mound holes all over the place here. But when I scrape this up, just watch all the holes that are in there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, they're, so the worms are loving it out here too. And this is more or less just uh, wood chips, sawdust, wood chips, pine shavings, whatever you want to call it, from boom guards. And I put this in. This is one year's cleaning out of my coop. Every once a year, every spring, I just clean my chicken coop, and I throw it out here and let it decompose. And the chickens come out and scratch this as well. You Constantly, come. that's why. Okay. Normally the pile is out here, but I just scooped this all up the other day, and okay. they're already working their way out there. But yeah, they're constantly rummaging through here, so I'm sure there's some extra poop in there. But this will be enough to cover the food that we put in there. So I essentially I just put that in, spread it out a little bit, and I'm not worried about burying it underneath. I'll let the worms take care of that, and then I'll yep. just enough to cover it up is all I'm worried about. Now, I noticed that this is a little dry. We haven't had rain in a while, Okay. so I'm going to go ahead and wet that down while we're here. Because wormies like it moist. They yep. like a nice, moist environment. Then I only feed on one side or the other each time because if this, if there is enough debris in there that it starts to ferment or compost and get warm, the worms have a place to escape to go over here where I know it's no longer hot composting. Mm -hmm. And I don't worry with this pass through bin, I don't worry about getting it too wet because this is very well drained. A lot of times I'll do this until I hear water dripping in the pans down below. So for those of you that uh, did not see the, oh, you cracker. 
He didn't put the coffee grounds in. I'll throw them on top. They'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about the coffee grounds composting too much, but we'll spread them out. Good grit. I throw all our coffee grounds in. I used to feed it to the soldier flies, but my soldier flies didn't do so well. They survived the winter, but I have not seen eggs and whatnot out there yet, so I don't know if they're reproducing or not. I suppose if they ain't laying eggs, they ain't reproducing. But see, as you can see, the wigglers really love this cardboard. They're all over in that cardboard. They just... And I use the cardboard mainly just to hold moisture in. Mm -hmm. Put on top of there, throw it on there, and, and they love it. It's getting kind of ratty. And then I'll plug the holes with some of this cardboard as they eat and drop holes out. But they're, they seem to be really... Here again, I'm really glad that AJ gave me another shot here with a pound of worms because these things are doing awesome. I just, I'm, I couldn't be more pleased. I don't know if he has better worms than Uncle Jim's Worm Factory, but... That's where I got them from. I know, that's where I got my first two herds from too, but I think he gave you the good ones and gave yeah. me the good ones. That's what I think. He was picking on me. Exactly. He was picking on me. <laughs> So the way this bend works, for those of you that didn't see the other videos, I've got, there's three axles running through here, all the way to the other side, and on each one of these axles, there's fingers that run across. So they actually, they sit like that, and they, as I agitate that, the fingers are doing this number, so everything can fall through. I'm thinking I might have them a little too wide, or the holes are a little too big because of the holes dropping down in, but like I said, I'm going to give it time until I get this bend, because theoretically this bend should be this full. Mm -hmm. We're still working on a new bend. I can't seem to fill it up. They keep eating it as fast as I put it in there, so. But essentially you rock this guy here, and the stuff falls out down here into these trays. So question for you. Yes, sir. You said if your fingers are, the grates are too wide, whatever, down there? Yeah. Would you modify it and make them smaller, or did you, or would you have to just well, start like, over? How would you? That's what the. I'm a believer in going small scale till you know what you're doing, and then go big scale. Okay. I don't want to jump in too big, so I'm gonna see, Mama. I'm gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see how this works out because I like right now. I notice when I'm rocking this thing, mm -hmm. I'm not getting much for fallout. Yeah. There, I got some fallout because I wanted okay. to show you the cleaning process here. There, I got some fallout. So essentially the castings come out the bottom. Most of this is uh, spent material. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I end up doing with that then is I got a, this is a pretty fine screen. This is regular window screen, 16th inch, because I don't want the big debris and whatnot in there. Yeah. And of course I left my other. So I'll drop. And you can see there is some wood chips and whatnot in there. Yep. So what we do, and you can't see much for worms in there right now, but okay. there are worms that fall through. And you could take this stuff right directly out, put it on your plants as is. Yep. It would make beautiful fertilizer. But here I'm breaking down to where I get, I want to show you some beautiful black gold here. Yeah. So essentially all this stuff here I would throw back in the thing. But you'll see a lot of, if I get my glasses on, I might be able to see them too. But I didn't realize. There's one right there. Yep, there's all kinds yeah. of worms, worms, worms. And there's a lot of baby ones in here. Here's a cocoon. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, baby worms in there too. I mean, I got oodles of them little guys. Just oodles of them. And they were really enjoying the lawnmower cleanings, uh -huh. the deck cleanings. So this here I'll just throw back in the bin. Yep. Because that, as far as I'm concerned, that can still compost more. Yep. But this here is where it's at. Oh, that stuff is beautiful. Yep. This here is black gold, ladies and gentlemen. That's black gold. You can start plants in this. And what I found out is I did put some of this stuff in my avocado trees. Yeah. And when I went to transplant my avocado trees, my goodness, I couldn't believe all the worms that were inside them. Oh, yeah. Because of the eggs and whatnot that are in here. Yeah. And this makes beautiful. I mean, I planted avocado trees directly in just this alone. Mm -hmm. And they, they were loving it. Totally loving it. So that's what we're after right there for the... I try it. So that's good fertilizer right there. And as long as it's moist, I'm going to go ahead and... What I've been doing with this stuff is... Let's get this. All right, Mama Cat, I'm going to... I'm going to open up your... Unshake your world there. 
I'll just throw that in there. And then I'm, uh, we had gone through the pile of wood out here beside the chicken coop that I'm, whoa, Sorry. no, you're fine. That I'm composting. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, a big worm farm in there. So essentially, I'm relying on all the eggs and whatever itty bitty baby worms to fall through this screen. Because I don't have much for a garden yet. I'm not much of a green thumb kind of guy, but mm -hmm. I thought I could. So the lawn, well, right here, this is some of the lawn deck cleanings, and they're just buried deep into that stuff. But that's from the lawn deck, I can tell, because it's still... But yeah, every piece I pick up, the worms are just loving it. So that's just more or less the... When you clean your deck out on your lawnmower, which a lot of people probably don't realize this, this is totally off the subject of worm farming, but if you're getting strips in your lawn... It's not your blades, and this, not this, and that. Try cleaning your deck, the strips will go away. Oh. Just tidbit. Your That's blades cool. probably ain't wrong. Now, if you sharpen the blades and it don't cut the lawn, you put the blades in upside down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you save some headache there. <laughs> totally not on the subject, but I had that in there. I mean, after all, this is an education center here. <laughs> exactly. So, we'll educate. So, I'm more or less... Like I said, this bin is still pretty new, but my goodness, that is some... Mm -hmm. You can't buy potting mix like that in a store. You yeah. cannot buy it in a store. That's excellent potting mix right there. And it's kind of... You can tell that it's all a lot of little round ones in there. That's all worm poop. I guess that's all the bigger their poops are. Mm -hmm. So it's... Uh, but there's a lot of eggs in here and whatnot. I don't know if we can see them. They're kind of hard to see because they camouflage in there. Yeah. But I do get some cocoons. It's a pretty fine screen. But see, there's one of the little babies right there that got by the screen. Oh, yeah. That's an itty-bitty red wiggler mm -hmm. there. Itty-bitty red wiggler. Yeah. So every time I put them out there, I just take that out and I dump it in the branch pile out here. And then they'll also help break this pile down. And the idea behind this is, is beans, I've been inoculating this with this stuff here for the last... Uh, two months or so let's see here we'll find a spot here and i pour it all in one spot just simply so they have a go-to spot as far as i'm sure there's this pile's been here now for three four years so i'm pretty sure there's a pretty good bed of decomposed material down there because this pile was a lot taller than this when i put it here so i know it's condensing down but essentially i want to put these inoculate this with red wigglers and then when my chickens come out and they go scratching around here they get the worms and the worms help break down this pile and i just instead of burning the branches and putting the pollutants in the air i'll pile them on this pile and let them decompose and build my soil yeah know? and this would break down a lot quicker if i ran this through a chipper mulched it up of yeah. course it's gonna i mean every time you break it down the more surface area you have the easier compost exactly so, but i'm just letting nature do its deal here yeah essentially what I'm after. But yeah, the, the chicken litter is awesome stuff. And if anybody wants some of that to try it in their worm bin, uh, hook me up or let AJ know or yeah. find out. You're more than welcome to try it out. I'll, I'll give you what you want to give it a whirl in your bin to see if it helps your bin. Which would be kind of cool because then we know. And like AJ said, there is no offensive smell here, is there? No. No, no, no. whatsoever. Smells like dirt. Yeah, it's clean. I mean, it's pretty awesome. But thanks again, AJ, for the worms. I appreciate it, bud. They're yep. awesome because now I got myself a herd. Yeah, I'm They're glad. They're doing good. <laughs> I'm glad we could problem solve. They're doing out. real good. I know I'm pretty sure that my biggest problem with my previous uh, herds was that I did not have enough moisture in them. Mm -hmm. So keep track of your moisture. In a tote, you're more than likely you're going to be a lot moister than what you are here. Yeah. I mean, here I've got cracks and whatnot, and mm -hmm. the whole bottom is exposed to air. So mm -hmm. I think that was what my problem was when yeah. I lost my herd. I was too dry. Yep, I can see that happening. Because now yeah. that it's wet, it's they're they're thriving. That's it's awesome. It's amazing. It's totally amazing. I love it. It's awesome. But I guess that's the update on the red wigglers. Like I said, they're, I better document today we've had them. What's today's date? Um, the 25th. 
So, so quick question. I'm going to switch gears on you just for a okay. second. You have black soldier flies too, and you said that um, you think something might have happened with them over the few months you've had your soldier flies. Am I correct? With yes. That? I know you video. Okay. Um, I had last year. I got uh, soldier flies. Got started in the black soldier flies. I did not have a fly house set up or a controlled environment for them, so we set them out there in the in the uh, compost fence that I put up. Put them in there. They did awesome. They eat great. They, I mean, I was very impressed with how much they eat. I mean, these red wigglers, they don't stand a chance at a food eating contest with the black soldier fly at all. Okay. But essentially, they don't live through the winter. They can't freeze. Yeah. So I had to bring them into the shop, and I had lots of larvae in the bin here in the shop, which they made it through the winter fine. Yeah. And then I put them back out there, and I I have not been out there to look to see if I've gotten any eggs yet, but yeah. I did not notice any eggs going on. But I have run across, for instance, the other day I was telling AJ before the video, there was a black soldier fly buzzing around the window here, and I'm okay. pretty sure it was because one of the pupa crawled out of the bin, mm -hmm. found itself a place to burrow in here or something, and hatched out. So they did hatch out, and they were coming back, because I did see soldier flies down there at the bin. Not very many, yeah. but here again, I'm not containing them. Yeah. But for what it's worth, what I've learned, number one, I would want to contain them, and I'd love to put up and make a fly house and start breeding them yeah. because I think that's important. And I honestly think if I would have had a fly house out there and they would have been out all winter long yeah. and doing their thing and yeah. I was feeding them, that population would be just horrendous right now. So, okay. I mean, it's, it's all about learning. Yeah. You know, I mean, they... I've learned a lot on them. I've learned that if you neglect your critters, mm -hmm. they don't do well either. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Did I neglect them? I didn't think so. I kept them here in the shop, kept them warm, yeah. you know, yeah. and they did their thing. So I made them survive through the winter, yeah. but they were in a very slow dormant stage because they were at their coldest temperature that they want to be, which is about 50 degrees is okay. their coldest temperature. And there's a lot of times this shop isn't 50 degrees. Yeah. I mean, I don't heat the shop if I'm not in here. So mm -hmm. I just keep it above freezing. But they they survived the winter, put it that way. And okay. like I said, I haven't checked the the uh, nesting boxes to see if they've got yeah. eggs going on in there. So, okay. But essentially, I think if I contained them better and they had a certain home instead of flying all over. Because I've seen soldier flies all the way up by the house. Oh. I mean, okay. from clear down there, I mean, that's a good well. 150, 200 yards away where mm -hmm. they were at you know, away from the bend. So I know they're out and about going all over the place, yeah. you know, That's cool. and they won't survive through the winter, but okay. we can contain them and away we go, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's about sums up on the soldier fly. They're, okay. they're an excellent species too. If you've got the room and you want to play with them, I mean, even to get some in the early spring of the year, just to play with them. Yeah. It's amazing. Cause you can throw raw meat in there. You can throw a a roadkill in there and mm -hmm. they will just devour it. It mm -hmm. is amazing to see how quick they eat and how much they eat. It's very oh. impressive. It's definitely something that I want to get into bigger yeah. and do. Yeah. But here again, life is busy. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I know. You can only do so much. I'm getting to get to the point where I don't even set goals because they're just setting me up for disappointment. Yeah. But then I'll never succeed at anything I if hear. I don't have goals. That's so, right. You know, set yourself you. some goals and work toward them because you can do whatever you want. We live in a great country here. That's you right. can. You can proceed in this country if you put your mind to it. Exactly. Go, you know, but you have to have, you have to have, uh, what do you want to call it? Ambition. Ambition is the word. You know, yep. ambition. You have to have ambition. Exactly. You know? There is no free handouts. So. Exactly. But that about sums it up for the worms and yep. the thing. The other one I wanted to touch base on too, I was talking about earlier. If you neglect, if you neglect your projects and don't take care of them, this is a bad dewy here. Bad dewy here. I have not been keeping up on my millworm farm. We've touched base on that too before. And I have not been keeping up on these guys, taking care of them. And I've got beetles, and I do see that there is some pupa going on in there too. But yeah. i got a lot of dead beetles. I have not been taking care of these guys like I should, mm -hmm. and I'm losing my flock. So I'm going to have to do something mm -hmm. to make sure this goes. But case in point, if you neglect what you're working on and... And what you're doing, and you don't put forth an effort, it's not going to turn out. I try. Proof is in the pudding. So I try. You know, 
Yeah. But other than that, the chickens are doing awesome. We got some. Uh, we got some baby kitties. We gotta go peek at the baby kitties. Let's take a peek <laughs> at the baby kitties. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's first babies. I gotta show off my babies. So when did she have the kittens? Uh good God, I wrote that in my book up there. But okay. she had these some time ago, didn't you, Mama? Yeah, you love your babies, don't you? But she had six of them, and they're all little tigers. Here, you're not gonna show them off or what? Oh, they're on. Oh, sweet. Yeah, they're hiding in there. So <laughs> they're oh, all. Nice. They're all pretty much little tiger kitties. Yeah, they're here. They're hearing my voice, so here oh, they come. Oh man, that's awesome! But they hear my voice, and Sweet. then they come out. Yeah, you're a good little kitty, aren't you? I would yeah. never know they were even up there. They're so quiet. Yeah, they are. Well, until they tumble out of here and hit the ground, then they get kind of boisterous. Yeah. But we set her up a nice spot over here, down lower on the ground. But okay. see that little guy? He can hear me, so he's coming yeah. out to investigate. You love me more than Mama, don't you? Yeah. So how many did she have? She had six of them total. Oh wow. Okay. But yeah, here comes another one that hears me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They're getting used to me, so they come yeah, out here and she's awesome. been just an awesome kitty. That's cool. Just an awesome kitty. And I don't I don't know if I wanna you guys stay with mommy. <laughs> That's so cute. I don't know if I wanna get rid of them because mm -hmm. they are good. There, she's a good mouser too. She's a real good mouser, so mm -hmm. they're good to have around. They keep the rodents down. So I don't know if I want to get rid of any of them, but yeah. If anybody's interested in I definitely don't want to get rid of them unless they're getting a really good home. So yeah. if you're interested in getting them and raise them to eat them, I don't call me. But if you're, <laughs> if you're going to give them a nice yeah. home and love them and take care of them, yeah, give me a call. We'll see what we can't do. <laughs> I hear you, man. I kind of, I, I'm falling for the little shysters. Yeah, I hear you, man. They're cute kittens. <laughs> yes, they are. But is there anything else that we want to touch base on, AJ? Or no, I just want to say I'm glad that uh, you're we've. We problem solved your worms. Yes. So things are going yeah. in the right direction. You know, we definitely we know what if you neglect things, things don't work out like you should. Yep. Have ambitions, have a plan, you know, and stay green and try to make the world a better place. Exactly. And we can make so. the world a better place just by showing a little love, man. Just That's right. Show a little love. That's all That's I'm right. asking. I'm this uh chaos that we got going on in our country right now is mm -hmm. not making the world a better place people yeah. just show a little love let's that's right. that's throw right. up you know i mean yeah. i don't want to get into that because i'm calm right now yeah i want to stay calm <laughs> yeah we don't want to get dewey ruffled we don't no. want to rattle dewey's cage <laughs> not at not at 9 30 in the morning you don't want to get me wound up because boy the rest of the day is going to be heck to pay i'll guarantee it you don't want to get me riled up as early in the morning. But, right. <laughs> but Dewey, I just want to say thank you for your time. You know, you're a great guy. Uh, people appreciate you, and you know they they enjoy how we work together as a as yeah. a team. And well, we've got to keep it up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so it's awesome. I want to thank you again for mm -hmm. getting me set up again because being you did get me set up, we got to do some really cool videos together. Yeah, so. Hopefully exactly. we can keep going down the road and hopefully right. someday when we come with AJ comes out here and does a video with Dewey, mm -hmm. we're going to be touring a facility that's probably 100 foot long and 50 foot wide. That's right. That would be the ultimate there. To, I'd like to be feeding my red wigglers with a tractor. That's right. I agree. <laughs> that so, would be really awesome. Yep. Collecting food from restaurants and whatnot and actually setting up an entire system mm -hmm. with waste management. If I can get people to be sensible enough and not to throw plastics and styrofoam and all this other garbage in there that's not compostable, mm -hmm. it would be a beautiful thing. But I think that's one of the major hurdles I'm going to have is people are not mm -hmm. responsible enough yeah. to say, hey, this is not edible, but you know what? Let him deal with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want that mess, but I know. we'll have to see if we can get people to smarten up, I guess I would say, smarten up and realize mm -hmm. that. If we don't start taking care of our planet, people, we're not going to hurt Mother Earth. She's mm -hmm. she's going to say enough is enough, and guess what? <laughs> she doesn't care. She doesn't care what kind of person you are. Exactly. If you need to go, you need to go. Yeah. That's all there is to it. That's right. And you know, we just need to take care of her. That's all there is to it. I I honestly believe that in my heart. We need to take care of her. I try, and it all starts with you. Yeah. It all starts with you. <laughs> you make the difference. Yeah. I mean, if everybody took an extra precaution, I mean, even if you did one thing a week, if everybody on this planet did one thing a week to embed our planet 
and use less or this or that, it would make a huge difference. Huge difference. Now imagine if you do that every single day. Yeah. And just live a life of, for instance, people bring me egg cartons because I hand out a lot of eggs. Mm -hmm. They bring me a styrofoam egg carton or a plastic egg carton. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're not leaving that here. Yeah, that's good though. <laughs> Don't. That's don't be buying them yeah. stupid plastic and styrofoam egg cartons. That's right, dude. Give me a break. I mean, that's right. they're nasty. The paper ones, the worms will eat them paper yeah. ones all day long. They love it. Exactly. You know, you know there's no point in, but I digress. <laughs> no, I hear you, man. You know, spread yeah. a little love, people. That's, that's right. all I'm saying. Okay? Yeah. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for watching the video. Please post this video. Share this video. Carry the word out for us, people. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. You let the let the love win and the hate lose. Amen, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, peace out, people. Bye, viewers. <laughs>